Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Bismillah uh, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu wa rahmatullahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala. So I'm a little late today because of uh, Salat al Jum'ah. I just got home. So it seems like that's the drill. So yesterday I was coming from back from Louisville, so today just back from uh, Khutbat al Jum'ah. So I apologize. It seems like every time I'm going to do this, I'm going to be gasping for air. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala, hopefully we'll still be able to benefit. Um, so right now we're on day five, so we're in Juz six now. So we've gotten to the end of Surah Nisa, and we're now moving into the beginning of Surah Al Maida. Uh, when it comes to the beginning of Surah Al Maida and the end of Surah Nisa, the connection is very beautiful. In the end of Surah Nisa, if you realize Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ma yafal Allahu bi adabikum in shakartum wa amantum wa kana Allahu shakiran alima," that the last Juz ended off with, "Why would Allah?" Uh, what benefit would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have in punishing you if you are grateful and if you believe? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always appreciative and all-knowing. In Surah Nisa, uh, the end of it, which comes into Juz 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, talks about the relationship between the Muslims and the people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns uh, the Muslims from being divided once again as he did in Surah Ali Imran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the very end of Surah Nisa, uh, a very long verse which which sort of sums up the rules of inheritance and and things that were uh, that were relevant to the Muslims after the battle um, of Uhud in regards to the widows and the orphans and so on and so forth, which brings us now into Surah Al Maida. Uh, Surah Al Maida has a different time period. Um, Surah Nisa is uh, as we said it's after Uhud. Surah Ali Imran we said part of it is after Badr and part of it, the second part of it is after, or, or the latter part of it is after Uhud. So now we're really moving into a different, um, a different area altogether, a different part altogether. In Surat, uh, in Surat Al-Ma'idah, when we're looking at the battle of Uhud, we're moving now to a point of victory. And so now we're in post Hudaybiyah. We're actually in post Sul Hudaybiyah, the treaty that was made between the Muslims and the people of Mecca after the Muslims were now in a position of power. So what this shows you is that the Muslims heeded the advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After they were defeated in Uhud, they turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They sought his forgiveness. They came back to him. And because they returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his promise to them, which was that Allah will protect them against any enemy. And as long as you stay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا غَارِبَ لَكُمْ then no one will be able to overcome you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brought them back to him. He gave them victory. They're now in a position where they actually could extract mercilessness on the people of Mecca. This is post the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So the Muslims are powerful. They could march upon Mecca and they could get into a battle. And the likelihood is that they would win. Okay, so they're in a position of power now. They're in a position of authority. And you can think about the beautiful order here that we're being given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, first, in, in Surah Ali Imran, you have pre-Badr, or, or I'm sorry, uh, right around the time of Badr. So it's when the Muslims are on a high because they were able to defeat a much larger um, enemy, uh, an oppressor that was coming to consume them, and that assumed that because they were a smaller number, they'd be able to do away with them. So the Muslims were a small number, but they were able to be given victory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them to be humble, uh, teaches them lessons from that victory, and teaches them lessons on, on unity and staying together. So it starts off with Badr. Then it goes to Uhud, where the Muslims were defeated because they did not heed all of the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them. And now it's in Surah Al-Ma'idah, post Hudaybiyah, where the Muslims heeded the lessons, they turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're in a place of success and authority and victory, and they could extract their will, impose their will truly on the people of Mecca if they wanted to. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again is reminding them of humility and reminding them to stay uh, humble and to stay close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there's also a new age in da'wah here. After Hudaybiyah, at the time period of the revelation of Surah Al-Ma'idah, the Prophet ﷺ is now sending letters to the to the rulers and the emperors around the world to accept Islam or to or, or to listen to his message. So he's sending letters to the Roman Empire, to Heraclius, to uh, to Persia, and so on and so forth. He's sending his messengers because he has that freedom, alayhi salatu wasalam, to be able to call people to Allah subhanahu wa taala, to be able to call the royal uh, the the leaders around the world, the royalty around the world, 
to Islam. So we find in Surah Al-Ma'idah now, <clears throat> we're going to have some of the etiquettes of da'wah, some of the etiquettes of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because now they're calling to people that are outside of their scope. They're no longer just limited to Mecca and Medina <clears throat> and Abyssinia, but rather they're in a position where they could call out to people that are far away because they're in a position of authority. They've established themselves in Medina and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them uh, that blessing. We also see that in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the maturity of the, the laws is shown. So, you know, in, in, in Surah An-Nisa, uh, there's a lot of law about marriage. And again, it really was born out of a state of emergency because they, they didn't know what to do with all of the widows and the orphans of Badr. So the laws of inheritance and the laws of marriage and divorce that came in Surah An-Nisa, they came because of necessity uh, in a state of emergency people not knowing how to deal with the sudden situation that they had. So a lot of the laws that came in Surah Nisa, once again, were out of emergency, and it's reflected in the tone uh, of the surah, as it's obviously addressing a post-Uhud context. Now in Surah Al-Ma'idah, you have the laws of uh, halal and haram, of, of, uh, you know, in, in regards to food, so dietary law. You have the laws of Umrah okay, and Hajj. You have some more detailed laws of marriage. You have some of the criminal punishment that comes. So it's clear that the Muslims are now in an established uh, situation where the law is a, is a lot more mature at this point. More uh, obligations and more, more sunan have been uh, revealed as well as prohibitions and punishments and so on and so forth. So that framework is really being provided um, in Surah Al-Ma'idah and it reflects where the Muslims were at in their, uh, in their, in their state in Medina. Um, it also, of course, goes on to the lessons to the people of the book. It continues with the same uh, breath in that sense, uh, speaking to the people of the book. In Surah Ali Imran, and Surah Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in Surah Nisa, uh, focuses on those that claimed that they were able to defeat or that they were able to kill Isa ibn Maryam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really condemns those who slander Maryam alayhi salam those who slandered Maryam salamun alayha, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns those who thought they killed Isa alayhi salam, those who set out to crucify him. And in Surah Al-Ma'idah now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, really is turning to the followers of Christ and the followers of Mary, not to exaggerate uh, with their stations, but rather to, uh, to, to believe in them as they would have wanted to be believed in, um, and to acknowledge uh, the Lord of Isa alayhi salam the way that Isa alayhi salam himself did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the dangers of exaggerating the station of Isa alayhi salam um, in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So the audience changes. It's not talking to the rejectors of Isa and Maryam, salamun alayhim, but it's then it's talking to the followers of Isa and Maryam, uh, salamun alayhim. So we have this situation now where you have an address towards uh, some of the Christians as well as some of the Jews, uh, the Jewish tribes in Medina. Obviously, this is a post Banu Quraida uh, surah. So the, the, the situation with the Muslims in Medina, with some of the Jewish tribes is quite tense because there was uh, treason committed by Banu Quraida, Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir. Uh, there are other Jewish tribes as well now that, are, that have a good relationship with the Prophet Wasallam. So it sort of defines some of those terms once again um, as they're dealing with it. So let's go through the surah. Now that you sort of understand the context in which the surah was revealed, let's go through the surah. It starts off right away with, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu awfu bil uqud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of fulfilling all contracts. O you who believe. And you can tell now that the address is particularly to the ummah. So, O you who believe. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu. Surah Nisa started off with, Ya ayyuhal nas ittaqu rabbakum. O people. Surah Al-Ma'idah is, O, uh, o you who believe. Um, so it's it's sort of addressing the Muslims now in particular. Awfu bil uqud. Fulfill your trusts, fulfill your contracts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions uhiddat lakum bahimatul an'am that the, the grazing livestock, the animals that are grazing livestock are uh, are halal for you. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the hunting that is uh, not permitted when a person is in a state of ihram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to go into, in verse 2, the sanctity of the sacred month. So, al-ashhur uh, al-haram, which would be, um, you know, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, Muharram, obviously, is one of the al-qa'da, the al-hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab, these four months, which are the sacred months. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a person not violating 
the laws of Allah in the sacred months, whether that comes in, you know, in regards to the house as far as the Kaaba is concerned, or it's in regards to hunting and the laws of hunting and the way that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is treated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the laws of al-ashhur al-haram and reinforces the laws of the sacred months in al-ashhur al-haram. Verse 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَمُ وَنَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, you know, the, the prohibition um, of eating dead animals, blood, uh, you know, the flesh of swine, and that which has been uh, dedicated to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-munkhaniqa, uh, the ones, the animals that were strangled or those that were killed by a violent blow uh, or by the goring of the horns, and so on and so forth. So you have a lot of laws here about the biha, about the slaughter and what's allowed in slaughter and what's allowed to eat. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, uh, you know, that يسألونك ماذا أحل لهم that they ask you, O oh Muhammad, what has been made lawful for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أحل لكم الطيبات that what's been made lawful, lawful for you are all good things. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that that which, you, which you've gained by trained hunting animals, that that's still lawful for you, that you can eat from that which is caught by your hunting animals. But start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as you've mentioned the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. In verse 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اليوم أحل لكم الطيبات وطعام الذين أوتوا الكتاب حل لكم وطعامكم حل لهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that today I have made lawful for you all that which is pure, and the food of the people of the book is lawful for you, and your food is lawful for them. It's really interesting here that this is uh, that this law of making the food of the people of the book halal comes in late Medina. Why? Because the Muslims are now in a situation where they're they're truly intermingling and dealing with people of the book. So Allah subhanahu wa taala opened that door for the food of the people of the book to be halal for them, so long as it still met the conditions uh, that were necessary. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made the uh, uh, marriage to the women of the people of the book halal for the Muslims. So it sort of shows you that dynamic as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 6 goes through the states of wudu and the states of jana- janaba. So just the basic laws of wudu and tayammum and, and ghusl and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is very beautiful in verse 7, وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمِيثَاقَهُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that remember the, the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his covenant with you. So he's not talking about the covenant to Bani Israel now. He's talking about the covenant to you. The covenant that you took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you were bound with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not talking about Bani Israel now. And I see a question, What is who are the people of the book? The, the Christians and the Jews. Uh, so... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking about Bani Israel now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about you, your ummah, and the covenant that you've taken with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because again, you want to learn from uh, the people that came before you. So remember the covenant that you took with Allah. Now that you're successful and you're established as an ummah, if qultum sami'na wa ata'na, when you said we hear and we obey, you did not say sami'na wa asayna, we hear and we disobey like the people before you said. But rather you said, we hear and we obey. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember that covenant. What taqullah and fear Allah, inna Allah alimun bidhat sudur Allah knows that which is concealed in the hearts. If you take this ayah and you connect it to the previous ayat, there's a beautiful uh, lesson to learn from it, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if the heart is corrupted, then a person is undoubtedly going to find loopholes in the law. Because that's what happened to the people before. Allah gave them laws, but because the hearts were diseased, the hearts deviated. So then what they did was they started to find loopholes and they started to cheat the law. So after Allah gives you these laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember your covenant with God and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that Allah knows what the heart uh, conceals. And Allah mentions, Ya ladina amanu kunu qawwamina lillah shuhada bil qist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses for justice. So Allah mentions once again the importance of being just. This ayah is very similar to an ayah that came in the last juz. However, here Allah subhanahu, however, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Don't let your hatred for a people stop you from being just. 
Why is this important? Because now you're in a position of authority. You can extract revenge upon people. You can take all sorts of things out on people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, make sure that you don't allow your hatred for people. Don't allow a sense of vengeance to overcome you now in your power to where you're going to uh, no longer show justice. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ taqwa. Show justice that is closer to piety. Allah And be mindful of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah knows of that which you do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He's promised the believers and those who do righteous deeds forgiveness and great reward. And Allah mentions the people who, who disbelieve and the punishment that comes for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah mentions, O oh, you who believe, remember the favor of Allah upon you. Remember the favor of Allah upon you. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Bani Israel, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the favor of God upon you. So once again, Allah is mentioning the favor that He's done to us and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala particularly protected the believers from those that try to attack them from inside and from outside. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And so let the believers place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah brings us back to Bani Israel. وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant with the children of Israel. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions particularly when He delegated amongst them uh, leaders and prophets uh, that would establish the right of Allah upon them. And they broke the covenant. And so that's when they were in their position of power. They broke their covenant with Allah. And they ended up uh, falling into, uh, into the punishment and the wrath of Allah because after Allah saved them, just like after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the believers after, after Uhud and so on and so forth, after Allah saved them, they became arrogant and they deviated. And Allah mentions now, وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَهُمْ فَنَسُوا حَظًّا مِمَّا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and from those who say we are Christians, we took their covenant but they forgot a portion of that which they were reminded of. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He took the covenants from the people of Moses, from the people of Jesus, and now He's taking the covenant from the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah lectures Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book. Ya Ahlul Kitab, qad ja'akum rasooluna yubayinu lakum kathira mimma kuntum tukhfuna min al-kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O people of the book, there has come to you a prophet, a messenger, that makes clear to you, كَثِيرًا مِمَّا كُنْتُمْ تُخْفُونَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ He makes clear to you a lot of that which you've concealed from the scripture and he overlook, and, and overlooking much. The reason why this is important is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the people of the book that the Prophet sallallahu is reviving much of the covenant that was abandoned by those that came before. So he's reviving much of the law of Musa and much of the law of Isa. He's bringing it back alayhi salatu wasalam to its proper practice. And Allah says, Yahdi bihi Allah. So once again, the concept of guidance and hidayah. Yahdi bihi Allah. Man attaba'a rilwanahu subul as-salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides those who pursue his pleasure. If you're pursuing the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will guide you. He will not turn you away from guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them from darkness to light by His permission. And Allah will guide them to a straight path. As long as a person is seeking the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will show them that path and He will guide them. In the next few verses, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the people of the book once again. Those that claim uh, that, that, that Isa alayhi salam um, is, is one of three, so, or, or I'm sorry, that God is, uh, is, is one of three, that there is a trinity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, those who boast about the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And those who thought that they were invincible from uh, fulfilling the covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions once again the position of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in regards to the previous covenants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes us back to the story of Musa alayhi salam. Now this is an important transition. Um, and I, I'd like you guys to stop the debate on halal food. I try to ignore the, the, the comments, but I'll get back to it at the end, inshallah. So stop uh, discussing halal food right now, inshallah ta'ala. 
uh, that's the, the Quran 30 for 30 is not about debating uh, the biha versus halal and so on and so forth. Uh, but but we're talking about summarizing the juz inshallah. So um, we go back to the people of Musa alayhi salam in verse 20. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ جَعَلَ فِيكُمْ أَنْبِيَاءَ وَجَعَلَكُمْ مُلُوكًا وَآتَيْنَا وَآتَاكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُؤْتِ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, O oh people of the... Remember when Musa said to his people, O oh my people, remember the favor of Allah upon you when he appointed amongst you prophets and made you possessors and gave you that which he had not given to anyone uh, from the world before you or among the world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you and he gave you position. This idea here that the Prophet sallam, is being told to remind his people of Musa alayhi salam in a particular place. What is the particular place here? The particular place is when Musa alayhi salam is about to enter into Jerusalem. Okay? Musa alayhi salam is about to enter into Jerusalem with his people from Bani Israel. Just as the Prophet sallam, and the Muslims are about to enter into Mecca. So this is right after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make the way for them to enter into Mecca. And Allah wants us to remember what happened to Musa alayhi salam and his people before they entered into Jerusalem. What happened? Musa alayhi salam says, Ya qawmi dukhulu al-ard al-muqaddasata allati katab Allahu lakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Moses said to them, O oh my people, enter the holy land that Allah has assigned for you and do not turn your backs upon it. Otherwise, you will become losers. And that's exactly what they did. They said, O oh Musa, Inna fiha qawman jabbarin. There are tyrants and there are people there that are big and strong and we will be defeated. SubhanAllah, they were coming from, the people of Musa salam had just finished the defeat of the army of Fir'aun. They just saw the army of Fir'aun drowned, a far greater army than that which existed in Jerusalem. They were drowned in a miraculous way and Bani Israel was completely you know, uh, vulnerable to them and Allah saved them. Just like the Muslims had just seen the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through all of these different battles. And now the uh, Musa Islam and his people are being told enter into Jerusalem just like the Prophet Islam and his people will be told to enter back into Mecca. The difference between the two is that one of them still does not realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is, is truly in charge and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting victory so the people of Musa turned away and so they were left out to dry in the desert not allowed to enter into Mecca uh, not allowed to enter into Jerusalem and they were punished for not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the Prophet sallallahu is being told he and his people do not make that same mistake when Allah writes down for you Mecca it will come to you and of course we see that once Mecca was written for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and for the believers they entered with grace they entered with forgiveness and justice and mercy. They were not afraid. They were not afraid of the consequences or the circumstances. And at the same time, they were not unjust. They maintained that justice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do earlier on um, in the surah. And then we have the story of uh, the two children of Adam alayhi salam. Okay. وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ Ibn Adam bil Haq that uh, mentioned to them, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the story of the two children of Adam Alaihi Salam, uh, particularly Cain and Abel, Qabil and Habil, when they were both commanded to offer a sacrifice to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah only accepted one of their sacrifices. So one of them, instead of turning to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he said to his brother that I will kill you. I will kill you. He turned his envy and his jealousy towards his brother. This whole story of Cain and Abel, what's the wisdom of having the story of Qabil and Habil suddenly pop up? The reason being is that typically the diseases of envy and hatred and, and spite and disunity and division come when we're very comfortable. It comes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in a position of ease and authority. And this is exactly what Allah is telling us, that a community is destroyed from within when it's powerful. Even if Allah settles your community and puts you in a position of authority and power, it's still the diseases of pride and envy and ego and disunity that can destroy an entire community. So we see the children of Adam alayhi salam 
and what happens with them due to uh, you know due to that envy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to to avoid due to that lack of justice and Allah warns us not to be like them if you fast forward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the prohibition of killing uh, innocent people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the prohibition of abandoning um, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah mentions the punishment for the thief uh, as sariq and Allah mentions uh, the repentance that he still opens the door for everyone no matter what they have done the repentance that still remains for them in verse 39 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says min ba'di dhulmihi whoever turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he has committed a transgression um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will accept his repentance because Allah is ghafoorun rahim he's all forgiving and all merciful and Allah mentions something very powerful here verse 40 let those who are in power recognize this alam ta'lam anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal ard yu'adhibu man yasha wa yaghfiru liman yasha wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir don't you know that the dominion of the entire heavens and the entire earth belongs to Allah it doesn't belong to anybody so no matter who you are or what 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 you're trying to do no matter no matter what position God has given you realize that God is still in charge Allah is still in charge you are not in a position um, where you can where, where, where you can act unjustly and you can act with oppression because Allah settled you um, in this earth so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He forgives who He wants, He punishes who He wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful, uh, or He maintains power above all things. So Allah mentions, once again, the importance of judgment. When they come to you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to judge justly. And Allah mentions some of the crimes of, uh, of the scholars of Bani Israel who were entrusted with the scripture, but they, but they did not judge justly. And instead, they, they cheated with their religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of not cheating with your religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, so for example, in verse 45, how he ordained upon the children of Israel a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth, and the legal retribution. But again, they, it, they were selective in applying that law, and, uh, and, and they only punished the poor, and they, they exempted the rich, and they exempted the elites, and so on and so forth. So Allah mentions the importance once again of justice. And so he says to the Prophet in verse 48, Okay, um, I'm sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, uh, I'm forgetting the verse actually. SubhanAllah. Hopefully it'll come back to me. I only have the translation in front of me, so I'm forgetting the, the verse. Uh, as it says, but basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he uh, he sent the Prophet sallallahu and the book to confirm that which came before and as a criterion over it, okay? Muhayminan, um, that's what I was looking for, Muhayminan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's a criterion over the books that came before. Uh, so this idea in verse 48 that the Qur'an basically establishes the just law that came before and it upholds the law that came before that was just and it comes with uh, with a revival of that sort um, is once again um, reiterated here and in verse 49 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and mentions that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to him should not be judged should not be taken away by the desires and the and, and the low inclinations of people and the temptations of people to where we start to become unjust with our book as well and unjust with our scripture um, as well. And we start to do things that ruin the law and we start to spoil that position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and finally, I'm just going to end with this verse in verse 54. Ya amanu man yartadda minkum fasawfa ya'ti yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna adillatin ala al-mu'minin a'izzatin ala al-kafirin yujahiduna fi sabilillah this verse is very powerful and it's a great um, conclusion to what we're studying today in this juz, in this chapter. O you who believe, whoever amongst you turns away from his faith, Allah will bring forth a people that he will love and who will love him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here al-istibdal, 
the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces nations. Why? Because they turned away from the covenant. So this message is not for Bani Israel. This message is for all of mankind. So if you turn away from the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expect to be replaced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So فَيَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ They will love Allah and Allah will love them. أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They'll show humility uh, towards the believers. أَعِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ D uh, dignity against those who reject faith. يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They strive in the path of Allah. وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَ تَلَاءٍ And they do not fear the blame of the blamers. That is the, the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He bestows it upon whom He wills and Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. Basically, that summary of our situation in regards to Bani Israel is very powerful. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can replace any one of us. Allah replaced Bani Israel. Bani Israel thought they could abuse the law and get away with it and continue to abuse and abuse and abuse. But instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced them because they continue to insist on their ways of disobedience. So we have to make sure we don't insist on disobedience, but rather we, we, uh, we stick to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we stick to His covenant. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, accept us into His mercy to uh, to make us amongst those who uphold the covenant with him. So this is uh, Juz 6. It ends at verse 81 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll see you all tomorrow for Juz 7. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.